Hello. It is Friday, July 23rd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome to my New York Times Daily Solve. So it's Friday, it's the end of the work week, and we're going to cap that off with what is likely to be the most challenging puzzle of the week so far, until the Saturday puzzle tomorrow. Um, and uh, I've got a new introductory animation. Um, I had that in yesterday, but I've also now um, quickly uh, put together a very brief new bit of music. So let me know how you think about that or what you think about it and uh, whether you think the volume is um, appropriate, I suppose. There were some, I think a couple people mentioned in the comments uh, in, if you saw the British uh, Guardian uh, quick crossword I did, yesterday as a test of, uh, of that new um, animation music um, and a test of this new environment that I'm in, if you happen to notice that. Some people said it was maybe too loud. So if you find it too loud, let me know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to dial that in, I suppose. Dial, another <laughs> reference to that uh, Guardian crossword yesterday. Um, and actually, in terms of the clue recap from recent puzzles. I, I do have one small thing to mention from that Guardian crossword. This was a really good catch by Michel McBride Charpentier, who pointed out, so I had mentioned in that puzzle that en enroll was one of the answers and was spelled E-N-R-O-L. And that's the British spelling of enroll. In the US, that word would be spelled E-N-R-O-L-L -L, with two L's. And that kind of thing is actually relatively common uh, in terms of British English versus American English. But um, Michelle pointed something out that I completely missed, which is there was another one of those going in the opposite direction. He says, fueled is also a British spelling, F-U-E-L-L-E-D, which was another answer in that puzzle. In the US, it would be fueled with one L, F-U-E-L-E-D like how enroll loses an L in British English and in the complete opposite way. What a wonderfully inconsistent language we have. <laughs> it's very true. The inconsistency of English, but really, to be honest, pretty much any language is actually quite inconsistent. Um, it's one of the things that makes crosswords interesting and fun because it allows, one of the things that allows for misdirection, but also one of the things I understand and acknowledge makes it difficult for those who speak English as a second language, ESL, a frequent crossword answer itself. And one other thing to point out, this is a correction to something I said. Jackson Myers pointed out in the comments, deltoids, this was a, a reference to, I think, delts from uh, yesterday's uh, New York Times crossword. He says, deltoids are the upper arm slash shoulder muscle. I know you don't like being in the business of spreading information. I had uh, clearly incorrectly described the deltoid muscle, and, and uh, I don't think it's going to be an enormous shock for you to know that the guy who never seems to know any of the sports answers also got something muscular not quite right. So uh, sorry about that, and thank you, Jackson, for the correction. So um, I think that's all the uh, all the opening business I've got. We've got that new animation and music. We've got yesterday's clues and answers. So I think we are ready to get started as we are asked here. Um, this is a puzzle by Michael Hawkins, edited as always by Will Shorts. And I am ready to get started, so I will dismiss the privacy veil with an okay. Did a bang up job. So um, this could be, this is going to be an idiomatic expression, presumably, and it's going to be you know, crushed it or smashed it or something like that. In fact, uh, either of those would fit. So we might have an ED and an IT here. So we could look at some crosses to see if we can score a really early win. I shall see the blank I die look pale with love. Much ado about nothing. Now, I suspect, actually, much like uh, a similar Shakespearean line in a recent puzzle we've done this week. Uh, I suspect this is air. I shall see the air I die. Look pale with love. I shall see the before I die. Wait, no. Yes, okay, that is where the E would go. Um, force. Now, force could be a verb to force something open. 
Um, but it could also be, um, say, a team, you know, a strike force. Um, could be a force in the physics sense, um, as in an erg is a unit of force, I believe, or work. Is an erg a unit of force or of work? I actually don't remember. Let's move on for the time being. Become slick in a way. Ice over, maybe? Now, I, the reason I got that, the reason I, I got to that guess pretty quickly is because I was predisposed to hoping for an I at the top there um, because of the it that I suspect might be here. So a landing place. Now, if this started with T, what would it be? A landing place. I mean, it could be landing. Could be a couple senses of that. Let's um, let's look at some other crosses here. Now that we have two in this across, country without an official army, navy, or air force. Now well, that's interesting. I don't know. I'll be really interested to see what this is. I feel as though this should be. This is an interesting piece of knowledge that I wish I wish I could bring to mind instantly. Um, counterpoint of Blan Blanche. Blanche, is it Blanche, the English word, or Blanche, the French word? Well, it's probably the French word because the counterpoint, so this is Blanche, the feminine form of white in French. So the feminine form of black in French would be noir or the, you know, as opposed to the masculine form of each of these, which would not have an E on the end, although I guess in the case of Blanche, it would also not have the H. Um, anyway, I think that's what it is. It's black in French. Letters that can fill in the blanks of blank A, blank D, blank E, R to make an appropriate surname. All right. Well, we see that the second of these is N. To make an appropriate surname. What is that getting at? So presumably we're going to spell something with these letters that's going to cleverly uh, sort of tie in in some kind of punny way with the rest of the name we make. Apologies if you're seeing this immediately. I assume it's going to start with a vowel so that this word can be Sort of end or and or ant or something. Uh, that seems tough though. Maybe not. I'm not sure. I don't want to. I don't want to get too sidetracked right at the beginning. Rub out. This will be a race, as in rub out with an eraser, or metaphorically rub out. I suppose. Kill. Yikes. Uh, jungle like. Jungle like. Iota. Let's keep looking around here. G.I. Powell Forrest Gump. Lieutenant Dan? Is that who that was in that movie? Ah, letter... Okay, I see. Letters that can fill in the blanks of this these letters to make an appropriate surname. This is SNL, because if you put SNL into that surname, it creates Sandler, Adam Sandler, who... I guess must have been a cast member on SNL. I don't know that I actually even knew that. SNL being Saturday Night Live for um, non, I guess, North American viewers who are not familiar with that show. I assume that show has sort of cultural cut through, but I don't actually know if it does or not. Um, so what is this iota? Not one iota, not one wit, not one bit, not one scrap. I guess it could be iota... That's what, a Greek letter? I guess it could be that as well. Jungle-like is another one I really feel as though I should be able to get immediately. Big name and slip-on shoes. I think Tom's. That rings a bell for me. Guarding blank, 1994 Shirley MacLaine movie. Oh boy, I want to say Tess, guarding Tess. Jungle-like. I guess jungle-like in this case must simply be dense. I was thinking, I was trying to find something that was more specific to jungles, but I guess I guess if you call something jungle-like, that is sort of what you're getting at, kind of? I don't know. Iffy. Iota here is shred. Not one iota, not one shred. 
not one of the tiniest little bit. Pool service. This pool service may be a ride along. It's got a question mark, so I think we can assume the pool is not a swimming pool or a pool of water of some other sort, but rather using pool in some other sense. And I think what it means is a, a carpool. Um, ride share, probably. That's more likely than ride along, actually, when I think about it. Crystal gazers lead in. So what this means is someone looking into a crystal ball, what do they lead with? They might say, I see, I see an unimpressive crossword solving time in your future. They say to me, watching me struggle with this puzzle. Elusive thing for a popular show. Elusive thing for a popular show. Um, so this, I guess, is a television program, probably, or a radio program, but honestly, in the U.S., it's probably a television program, um, where the contestants maybe have to get something. I don't know. I don't know. Props to a proofreader. So I think this is probably means props as in sort of useful items, as opposed to props, meaning in the colloquial sense of kudos or something like that. And the reason I think that is because like the way it's written feels like it would be kudos. And so that makes me think it's not <laughs> because we're because it's Friday. Uh, tank, a vat, I suppose. One who knows the drama of raising children. Question mark. One who knows the drama of raising children. Is there... I'm not sure I fan. Let's look back at this. Landing place. Could it be something, Matt? Well, let's keep going for now. Scrip specs. Scrip. So Script could be prescriptions. It could be that's that could be an abbreviation, and specs is also itself an abbreviation for specifications. So presumably, this is going to be an abbreviated form of something related to prescriptions. I mean, it could be amounts. A M T S. It doesn't seem great. Dashboard abbreviation could be R P M for revolutions per minute. In other words, what you see on a tachometer on a dashboard. Could be MPH or KPH for miles per hour, kilometers per hour. Um, do you band informally? Well, all right, this helps because this is the Electric Light Orchestra, uh, ELO. <clears throat> and we know that the abbreviation is okay because it said informally there. Um, well, script specs, we can probably put an S on the end of. Let's go ahead and do that. Is this 33 down? enterprise group. So this could be enterprise, meaning a company generally. I suppose it could be enterprise, meaning the USS Enterprise in Star Trek. Actually, could it be Starfleet? Could be. Broadway character who sings the rumor. I As I said before, I don't know very much about Broadway shows. More calculating. It probably ends with ER. Equals. Equals could be R, as in these these things equal that thing. These things are that thing. Queens, we are the champions of Visa V. We will rock you. So I don't actually know this by, it's not a fact that I know necessarily, but I suspect that because it's listing two Queen songs, these are both very popular, well-known Queen songs. So they're probably both singles. So one of them could be the side A of the other. Um, and I guess we are the champions was the side A of We Will Rock You. Um, we Will the Champions and We Will Rock You by Queen. Those were both written as an attempt. Those were both sort of, I think, explicitly written as an attempt to write um, sort of big anthemic, um, almost sing-along pieces, which they achieved in both cases, which is sort of astonishing, especially released at the same time on the same, presume, I guess, apparently the same single. And We Are the Champions was written by Freddie Mercury, the front man, and We Will Rock You was written by Brian May, the guitarist. And they're so, so different to one another. And yet both of them completely succeeded 
in becoming anthemic sing-alongs. I think in both cases in sport, in sort, you know, in both cases, well, I said, I think in sports context, I didn't mean I think that, as obviously that has happened. What I meant was, I think that that element of it wasn't necessarily specifically intentional, the sort of sports association. Um, but it is absolutely amazing to me that two different members of that band wrote at about the same time, two such different tracks trying to achieve a similar thing, and they both achieved it to an absolutely unbelievable degree. That's what an astonishing band. Um, okay, fresh could be sassy. In other words, don't get fresh with me. Don't get sassy with me. Let's see if that fits here. Lead into service or sacrifice. It does, because self-sacrifice and self-service are both, are both common phrases. Winter Olympics maneuver. I think we actually had this exact thing maybe last week. This would be an axel. No, we didn't. I think we had a plie, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. But anyway, this is sassy. Broadway character who sings The Rumor. Ah, okay. Yenta? Yentel? Yenta? I think this is from Fiddler on the Roof, actually, um, which I have not seen on Broadway, but I did watch this movie last year, and I thought it was unbelievably good. I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I just thought it was just excellent. Absolutely great. All right. More, uh, oops, more calculating. Could be slyer as in sly like a fox. Once you're forced into this, there's no going back. That would be exile. If you're forced into exile, the whole point is that you don't come back. Uh, more calculating. Yeah. So it probably is slyer. Uh, experimented with Oh God, I'm not sure offhand. Something get in. All right, let's lo let's keep looking around. Spot of coffee. Could it be? A, could be a stain, a spot of stain. It could be, um, like a cafe. Um, and the re because we've got this question mark at the end. So spot of coffee. Obviously, if you used that ordinarily in speech, you would assume um, spot of coffee. Some co would you like some coffee? Um, but it, I assume it does not mean that here because of the question mark and because it's a Friday puzzle. Okay. Diciembre is to doce as enero is to... All right. I don't know Spanish very well, really, but I think what the saying is December is to 12, I think that is, as enero, I think is January... Sorry to the Spanish speakers watching this. Uh, so maybe this, this would be uno, I assume. Oversized letter at the beginning of a chapter. Hmm. I mean, this sort of looks and feels like the number at the beginning of a chapter in a book, but I don't know what that would be. Does that have a name? I don't actually know. And I, I think it might not. I think it might, again, as I often suspect on a Friday, I think it might be trying to be a little more clever than that. Initiates a proposal, maybe. Kneels? In other words, if you're going to propose to your partner, you might initiate that proposal by kneeling. One way to gauge how well connected you are. I don't know what that is offhand. Attraction at a water park. Lazy river, maybe? In other words, a um, artificially created river that you... Uh, Traverse in a inner tube, an inflatable tube, or or uh, I guess maybe something not inflatable, maybe a some more permanent craft. Oversight. Okay, I don't know what that is. Let's look at some of these crosses because we've got a Z in here. Sluggish flow is probably an ooze. Official document informally. Let's see informally. If you've got your papers together, Ugh, I don't know. It'll come to me. Or it won't. Time for a countdown abbreviation. New Year's Eve, I suppose. N-Y-E. Cut back. Uh, I'm going to look elsewhere for now. Certain bank job. Could be a repo. Is it a repossession? The bank might repossess your home or your car if you can't make your mortgage or auto loan payments, for instance. Let's try that and see. Let's look at, let's look at this. I don't think we've looked at this yet. No, we haven't. Maze Runner. Maze Runner. I mean, a lab rat. A minotaur. 
Minotaur, maybe, uh, from the from the the myth on. Um, Minos, is it? The island? Minotaur? Okay. 1994 Olympics locale. It must be Norway. Norway is a very wintry country. They would host the Olympics, I would imagine. Um, swindle could be Rob or Khan, more likely than Rob. Khan is in, uh, you con somebody. Probably that. Uh, have we looked at this yet? No, I don't think we have. Company division. Company division. Platoon. So this means a company in the in a military force as opposed to a corporation. Elementium or Obsidium in World of Warcraft. I did very briefly play World of Warcraft, you know, fifteen years ago. But I, and I, I certainly don't remember either of these two things. But they look like ores, right? I mean, they look like a kind of ore, a fictional ore. So I assume they are. Ore meaning, um, you know, what you mine out of a mine to refine into something. Spot of coffee. Oh, a break room. In other words, a place at work where you might enjoy coffee. That would be the spot where you would have coffee. So let's look at this. This We've got a lot of crosses here. Experimented with. Could it be gambled with? Gambled in? No. Dabbled in. Dabbled in. Dabbled in. Sometimes uh, the amount of time it takes me to get some very simple clues makes me feel as though I've only dabbled in crosswords. Script specs. Meds? That doesn't sound right. Maybe it is, though. Dashboard abbreviation, miles per hour. Tasmania's capital, Hobart. I mean, Hobart sounds like a place. Let's wait and, and do this at the end. The, the reason I don't think meds, the reason I sort of meds is seems slightly odd to me is that I wouldn't think of the medications as sort of the specification, a spec on a script. I mean, that seems like the sort of headline information on a prescription as a, but I don't know, maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm being overly restrictive with my interpretation of specs. I don't know. Amusement park ride, perhaps. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know a fan. Props to a proofreader. Maybe it is props as in kudos. No, I mean, because this it could start with nice, and nice is something you might say at the beginning of such a phrase. Uh, go down. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to just look at some of these other crosses. And also, I don't even know that we've looked at all of the clues yet, to be honest. So maybe we should make sure we do that. Um, ankle biter. Imp, I guess. Like a, a, a little, small, annoying creature. I keep wanting to say this is nice edits, but I, but I don't think that's what it is because that would mean this is wrong. And that seems, that seems pretty plausible. Let's keep looking for now. Kylo of Star Wars, Kylo Ren is played by Adam Driver. Sixers and pro sports for short. I don't know. Amusement park right ride, perhaps. The perhaps is interesting. What is that getting at? Like some parking and poetry. Tapered? Does that make sense? Is that something that parking and poetry can be? Meter oh metered. So this isn't imp. Um, some parking is metered in the sense that there is a parking meter you must pay in order to park in the uh, relevant space, and some poetry is metered in the sense that some poetry, I suppose probably most poetry in the history of the in history of poetry, has a meter to it, a kind of rhythm to it, but some doesn't. A low sound. So what this means is um, is um, not low in the sense of high and low or high pitch and low pitch, although it is it is low pitched. Um, but I think what it's getting at is um, cows lowing, cows mooing. Free add-on could be dom, free dom. Could be a very straightforward thing like that. Oh, okay. Oversized letter at the beginning of a chapter, of course. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. I For some reason, I had a complete sort of 
brain twitch or something here. And I was thinking of this as the as an oversized number, which I, I don't remember if I said that. I think I did say that when I was going through this, which is obviously just a, a blatant misreading of the actual words in front of my face. This is a drop cap, a dropped capital letter. The drop cap is a is a term in typography and printing layout and refers to the the large you see this in um, newspaper articles often where the first letter in the layout will be very large and span anywhere from maybe two to five rows of text. Um, so this probably is free dom. One who knows the drama of raising children. Ah, stage mom. Okay, I don't feel too bad about not immediately jumping to that, although um, it is pretty clever. One who knows the drama of raising children. So stage mom, a mother uh, of ch a child who is uh, in, already in show business as a child. And so I think that's a slang term for that. Um, good heavens could be my something. Let's look here. Shiny balloon material. I think mylar sounds right to me. Tears down could be raises with a with a Z as opposed to uh, R A I S E S raises to tear something down. Um, still in it. If you're still in it, you're alive. We're still in this crossword. We're still getting through it. Stopping point. I uh, just hit a stopping point with this with this clue. Relative of mauve. So mauve is a color. What would a relative of mauve be? I don't know offhand. Let's just look. Uh, to cut back is to economize, um, as in in your household budget. One way to get to gauge how well connected you are. Ah, a speed test. So this refers to your internet connection. If you're going to test your internet connection, you'll perform a speed test and see how fast it is. Official document, ah, cert for certification. Official document, informally cert. Relative of a lilac is what this would be. So good heavens, my lord, my lord, this puzzle's finally coming together. Stopping point is a limit. Uh, Sixers and pro sports, I don't know what that is. Dashboard abbreviation, we're coming back to that. Ankle biter, could this be rat, maybe? Amusement park ride, perhaps. A oh, go-kart, a go-kart. Yep, that makes sense. Oh, Sixers and Pro Sports for short. I bet this is actually touchdowns, TDs. I really thought this was going to be a, a team abbreviation. I don't even I, maybe there. I don't even know if there is a, a team that ends in Sixers, but who knows? TNT in poker slang. Well, this is another thing I don't actually know, but could it be tens? Would that make sense? De Elusive thing for a popular show. Oh, okay. This was much simpler than I was making it. It's a hot ticket. It's a it's the general way to describe um, a uh, sort of score scoring a ticket for uh, for instance a, a Broadway show that's extremely popular. It's a hot ticket. You can hardly get one. I was trying to think of something. I was going. I was completely incorrect. I'm not even going to re-explain what I was saying because it's pointless. Ah, props to a proofreader. Nice catch. So I had a few, quite a few incorrect assumptions with some of these clues. I thought this was not going to be. Uh, props meaning kudos or compliment, but it, in fact it was. Nice catch, you might tell a proofreader who catches an error. Landing place, I see, it's tarmac. Um, tarmac is is the, um, it's actually in, a phrase that is used incorrectly to describe um, what is, I think, more accurate, accurately referred to as the apron, which is the, uh, where the, the airplane sort of taxis and takes off and lands. I believe that is actually called the apron, and I think it's called the tarmac because maybe it, that was the material of which it used to be made and, I, and may, it is no longer. Obviously, feel free to correct me on that if I'm uh, if I'm way off, and I will say nice catch in reply. Okay, so let's see. So we've got two little bits outstanding. We've got this dashboard abbreviation, which may be miles per hour, and then we've got this this uh, northwestern quadrant here. Oh, I don't think we've looked at this clue. Sure, they can go right ahead as a phrase. Um, I don't know. Ending with an M is sort of odd. Go down solid. Have we seen solid yet? I don't remember. We probably have. Classic hit. Now this I don't think we've seen, so maybe we didn't see solid. Classic hit that begins, my friends feel it's their appointed duty. Well, this 
This is incredibly distinctive. So if you know this, you probably know it right away. And I don't. Kind of treatment. Shock treatment. I don't think that I don't think that's correct because the K seems not not appropriate here. Looped in in a way. All right, this could be CC'd as in looped in on an email. Let's see if that helps. Plug, say, could be dam up as in to uh, plug a, a stream of water to dam up that stream of water. Revelation. So this could be revelation as in um, something that's revealed to you. Could be a revelation as sort of a um, something that you think is unprecedentedly great, just really wonderful. Uh, those things are obviously kind of similar, but slightly different senses. Country without an official, oh, Costa Rica? That must be, right? So to go down, could it be to dampen? I think dampen was, dampen was a clue, not an answer in a recent cross, crossword, I think. Solid. Oof, sorry about this, folks. I'm really, um, I, I feel as though I sh there's, <laughs> most of these should be a lot simpler than I'm probably making them, and I apologize if they are for you. Um, oh, well, here, did a bang up job is probably crushed it. Never returned to that, actually, after, after that initial set of guesses. Force could be dint, as in by dint of personality, by force of personality. Royal, kind of treatment, royal treatment. I wouldn't say I crushed it in this area of the crossword, but we're slowly getting there. Classic hit that fe begins, my friends feel it's their appointed duty. God, this sounds like something that James Brown would would kick off with in a song, you know? I mean, that could be that could be so far off, that could be an embarrassing thing to say, but that's what it sort of sounds like to me, but I don't, uh, I'm just not getting it. Oh, I see. To go down is to happen. If something goes down, it happens. That, um, what went down, you might ask someone, what happened? So that makes this eye-opener. So so yes, it's a, it's a revelation. It's an eye-opener. This was completely new to me. I had no idea. And it has changed the entire way I think of this little part of the grid of this crossword. Uh, so solid stout, presumably, here. Uh, okay. And then the reason I was having so much trouble with Sure, they can go right ahead. Uh, is because it's a, it's a very it's a very contracted, slangy way of saying let them, let them do it, let them solve crosswords. Use me. Okay, I don't know what this is. I'm sorry. I will have to look this up after the after the puzzle. So all we're left with now is this dash dashboard abbreviation, which could be MPH. Let's just try it out and see what happens. There it was. So that's the Friday puzzle, 2933. Um, so that was Tasmania's capital is Hobart. I apologize for not knowing that. If we have any residents of uh, Tasmania here or any Australians generally. Um, yeah, script specs. I'm a little, I suppose the medication is a specification of the prescription. I suppose that's fair enough. It doesn't really, it's not how I think of specs, but. That's, it's a minor, it's a very minor quibble. Um, crushed it. Uh, getting that initial, that initial suspicion about this sort of phrase this was going to be. Um, two word phrase ending in it with an ED. That was, I would say, relatively fortunate. Um, Costa Rica, I wish I would have gotten earlier, to be honest. I, with we we had some early crosses and I feel as though I probably could have guessed that better. I was lucky to know Lieutenant Dan. I suppose I guess I'm the right age um, for Forrest Gump to have uh, intersected with my childhood. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any Tom's. 
I think I was also fortunate to get that. That might be, I don't, I don't know how widely known that is. I only sort of was barely aware of this to begin with. Similarly, Guarding Tess, I've never even seen that movie. And that would have been a contemporary of Forrest Gump, probably within a couple of years of one another. Um, that would be tough, I suspect, for some some folks. A lot of the rest of it, I think you could get to, probably Hobart. It's probably a little tough. Um, but there were a lot of crosses there. Uh, Mylar, maybe, maybe a little unusual. All in all, I think this was a I think this was a pretty fun puzzle. I enjoyed it. Um, let me know how you fared. Oh, this Yenta uh, was lucky having seen um, Fiddler on the Roof recently. Anyway, really do recommend the film version of Fiddler on the Roof. It is incredibly fun. Really good movie. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this puzzle. Hope you like the new intro and outro animation and music. Um, and I hope you've been enjoying this series generally. If you have been, consider subscribing to this channel so that you can see all of these solves as they go up every morning. And why not tell a friend or an online acquaintance, wherever you think it would be appropriate to do that. And finally, if you do have the means and the inclination to toss me a couple of quid or a few bucks uh, to help keep this series going uh, in the longer term, then there is a link to my coffee donation page under the video in the description, or it will pop up at the end of this video as a link in one of the corners as well. And to everyone who has donated a bit, I appreciate it immensely. Um, I really, really do. You are crushing it with respect to me as far as I'm concerned. So thank you so much. And I will be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, the toughest puzzle of the week, uh, usually. And I hope you join me for that as well to kick off the weekend. So with that, take care. Uh -huh.